Hey guys, look at the latest creation coming off the bench. I talked about this in the last episode, another license plate guitar. Let me put this off to the side. Before I forget, I want to tell you about the music going on in the background. It's Sun House. I like Sun House, but this recording is Sun House in Seattle, 1968. Um, it's a 2D CD set. I'll give you a link to it at the bottom. What I particularly like about this is between the songs he plays, it's recorded live, I think in an apartment somewhere uh, where somebody interviewed him. If you look at him sitting on the bed there, it looks like he's got a brand new shirt, brand new jeans, a tie on, and it's, there's nothing around, just a bed and uh, an end table and some blank walls. Uh, but the stories he tells between the songs are particularly interesting, and you'll hear back into uh, the 1930s where he's talking about Robert Johnson and Charlie Patton and a few others. Okay, so today's episode is about, it's another episode on scarf joints. Remember we did one in the beginning where I showed you how to cut a scarf joint with a regular flush cut saw, kind of the, the primitive way where you stacked them on top of each other and made your measurements and, and I will give you a a link uh, showing up right about now in the upper right hand corner to that episode and then we had another episode recently where we talked about uh, how to build a scarf joint and put wooden dowels in to give you this triangular pattern to help with the glue up where it's not slipping away there's another link showing up right up there about now for that episode as well so anyway, I'm cranking out guitar after guitar now around the holiday season. And it's important that I'm able to do uh, quite a few of these. I like to cut these scarf joints quickly. And I found that when you cut them by hand, it takes a lot of sanding and stuff. So I like an automated process. Now, I know scarf joints next to fretting uh, is probably the scare, uh, scariest thing of the beginning cigar box guitar builder. So anyway, um, it inevitably, if you're going to build next, you've got to be able to automate that process where you're cranking these out uh, one right after another and your cuts are more precision-like. The reason I'm here today is I want to show you this. It's a jig that I made that sits on a chop saw, not to be confused with a table saw that you push through. A chop saw is one that you drop down. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to make this. Now, before I get too deep into taking credit for something like this, I do need to give somebody a shout out. You remember that episode I did called Don't Blow Your Top, where I had the C6 Steve guitar, the guitar that C6 Steve was playing at the end of the episode. Again, I'll give you a link up there. But that was my first neck. It come out of a, a kit, and there were so many things left to be desired, desired about the neck and the string height and everything. So... Um, right after that guitar, I started looking around to see if there was a way that I could make my guitars better. So I decided I would focus on the cigar box part and the pickups and things, but I started looking around for a pre-built neck. So I found this gentleman named Dan Dukes. You might know him as Darren Dukes, uh, Delta Groove Guitars, Big Daddy Mojo. Anyway, I bought a couple of necks off of him, both ones that I finished myself and ones that were completely fretted. And the quality of these things was awesome. And uh, in, in getting to talk to him, I also found out he was very helpful. He's the one that did more for me, uh, getting me off the ground as a builder than anybody. So uh, Dan Dukes, everything you've done for me wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you. So thanks for your tips and your parts and above all the awesome necks and pickups that you made. So back to this jig. This jig is nothing new. What it does is it lets you set this on the table of your chop saw. It's got a 15 degree angle and I've got this wrap around where it, it sits on there and it won't jump. But if you get into Big Daddy Mojo's videos, find those on YouTube. You'll, you'll see that the first one of these I saw was a Dan Dukes model. So again, thanks Dan. But today I'm going to show you how to build this. It really only takes about 10 minutes. You're going to wait for some glue to dry up and that links, link, blah, 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 lengthens the process. 
but it's really simple and it allows you to crank out a lot of scarf joints both on the neck boards and headstock. So let's hit the workbench. Okay, let's start here. I've got a chop saw and this is probably one of the most common saws that most people have outside of a table saw. I find this one really useful. I think you can buy one of these for less than a hundred bucks, but I've got two boards here. I've got one that's three and a half inches or about 90 uh, millimeters wide. This is something that you could cut in for a headstock. And then I've got an old cutoff from a, a board that I make a neck out of. It is about an inch and a half and about 38 millimeters wide. So we'll start with these two. I'm going to take this board here and uh, I'm going to cut a 15 degree angle in it because that's the angle of our headstock slope off uh, the neck board. So the first thing I want to do is look at this and make sure that there's no knots or anything because I'm going to have to put some uh, screws in this way ultimately. So what I want to do is I want to rotate my table here to 15 degrees and I want to make sure when I'm doing this I don't have my hands on anything where the saw could fire up. Again I'm looking at the end of the board and making sure there's nothing there. So I'm going to cut a 15 degree angle here. All right there we go 15 degree angle. Now before I forget I'm going to rotate my table back to the zero setting where it cuts straight down like so. Okay, now I've got uh, the uh, wider board with the 15 degree angle cut in it here and this old neck board which is longer and sticks out further than this table which I want. Now I'm laying this here like so and then I'm dropping the blade like so to make sure that, that this is just at the edge of where the blade comes down because when we put a board in to cut the neck it's actually going to cut this angle right here so this is again the template so I know from dropping this down that it's right on the edge here so then what I want to do is I want to come over here and I want to make a mark about right here and on the other side here because I'm going to want a piece of this wood over here to use as a stop so I can clamp this down and I'll show you what that looks like in a few minutes. So again I've made a mark at the edge here and one the width of this board away. And I want to cut just past that where this is like so. I'm going to have just a tad of sticking out past that and I'm going to make a clean cut here. I can get rid of this one. This is the one I'm interested in keeping. So a quick look. I hope you can see this. I've got a mark here at the edge. I've got enough to put the width of a board here plus a little bit sticking out. And then I've got this right here where my blade will still just barely skim the edge and pass down. Now this has to be, this board here has to be a length long enough that I can get out into here to clamp because if I'm going to clamp let's take a look at what this looks like I'm ultimately going to have the head or the neck board here and the headstock board I don't want to have my fingers right here like so and I don't want to have a clamp here so I want to have that clamp at least out into here so I'm going to make a mark about out to here where I got plenty of room to clamp you see what I mean and it, it, everything's out of the way of the saw that way and so I'm going to cut this off right about there. All right, there's my mark. And this is the one that will sit here like so. Okay, it's been my experience that if I try to put screws in this or something right now, um, it's, it's not going to line up right. I need this edge to be perfect right here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of tight bond on this board. I'm going to put that like so and get everything lined up where it needs to be. And now I've told you guys about these round holes and these pegs on your workbench. They're handy because you can move this around and rotate it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that angle right against there to make sure everything's right. 
get those points to meet exactly where I need them to be. And then I can take this clamp, like so, once everything is lined up good, and tighten that down like so. Once I come back later and make sure that this is all glued up where I need it to be, then I can put my screws in. So let's let this dry. All right, the glue's had a little bit of time to set up. Um, I'm going to run this over a, a belt sander when I'm done and make sure it's nice. Um, but I'm going to wait till I get the screws in here. I'm going to uh, wait a little bit longer for that to, to for the glue to set up. But what I need to do now is I want this piece of wood here, our guide on the saw ends up right here and so I want this to nestle in along the edge of the saw so this thing doesn't pivot around when there's a clamp on it so what I'm going to do is remember I marked this off on the saw where it needed to be and now I'm just going to run that line there like that flip this over here like so and we'll put a little tight bond on the edge of this and we will set it like so I want it to be flush with this end here and straight with that line there so we're just gonna leave this sit here and let it set up all right I think everything is dried up let's get this clamp off uh, now what I've got here is I've got a small pilot bit a countersink tool and a bit that's just a tad uh, smaller than these exterior finish screws so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this jig last a long time. And so I'm going to put screws in here. And it's really important that I get the screws below the surface of the here. Because this is going to have to sit on uh, the chop saw table, cutting table. And I don't want these to stick out. So I'm going to start pilot holes, countersink them, uh, and then put the uh, screws in. All right, the holes are ready and countersunk. I got a little trick here. I got a little bit of tight bond on a toothpick. Of course, they have to be bacon flavored toothpicks, a must. Anyway, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue in each one of them holes. Again, I don't want to ever have to make this again and I intend on using it a bunch. So I'm gonna put a little glue in there and then we'll run in the screws and make sure that they're just a tad below the surface. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this kicker for the side plate here. I'm gonna put a couple of screws in here. I've already got them marked where I need them to go. Okay, I've got the saw set up and I hope the cameras are at where you can see it, but this here fits right here and you can see that this part sticking out here goes to there I can just pull this up like so and, and clamp this down and it doesn't move also I've got this piece sticking out here past the table so I can put a small clamp uh, and the saw will pass right next to here so this is all really stable now let's cut a neck scarf joint and a headstock scarf joint and see how it works out. Okay, here we go, first time out. I've got a piece of tulip poplar here, and what I need you to know is this um, piece is going to be for a neck, and it is about six feet long. 
So I haven't cut it down. And so I'm going to put it here like this. I'm going to clamp it like so. And I should be able to, you notice that I've let it go just past the end there. And I'm going to stabilize it. And here we go. There it is. Nothing got in the way. Nothing got hit. And there's my cut. Nice and clean. Okay, now for the headstock. I've got a little bit wider board. Now I'm going to come off the bottom like this to keep this out of the way. I'm going to run it just a tad past the, um, the jig there. And I'm going to sit back here and hold it like this. And let's see what happens. There we go. Looks good to me. Got a little bit of sanding to do and squaring off, but that's going to work just fine. Yeah, so this thing literally took me a short of glue dry and probably 10 minutes to make. Um, and I can cut a ton of these all day long. Makes really nice smooth cuts. And uh, headstock cuts as well. Nice and smooth. Um, save me a bunch of time. All right, that's it. You can see with this thing, you can crank these out all day long. Cut 10 of, 10 of them at a time in a matter of minutes. And you're ready to go on to the next thing. Um, so give that a whirl. Let me know what you think. Remember, down at the bottom, uh, at the end of the video, is my email address. Send me an email. Uh, the subscribe playlist stuff is at the bottom. It's going to show up here in a minute. And... Lastly, don't forget about this Sun House in Seattle, 1968. Can't recommend it enough for you, and I'll see you next time.